mighty, magical, and mysterious, elementals are much more than mere monsters. They represent a vast portion of the Dungeons & Dragons cosmology. Elementals and the spells for summoning and binding them have been around since the game's earliest days. As such, it's no surprise that you'd want to get your hands on some elemental miniatures. Today we're focusing on Earth Elementals, and I'll tell you they aren't the most affordable. A size large Earth Elemental will run you between $5 and $8, and this size huge Elemental is, holy crap, $35. That's almost as much as a bottle of sanitizer. Halfway through March and that joke's already dated. Because they're sort of amorphous, you can certainly craft your own earth elemental out of some XPS foam. But instead of cutting up foam, I'll be starting with this toy that I picked up for just pennies at a local thrift store. This roided up sperm cell is Marshmallow from the Frozen movies. Now you don't need to use this exact character or figure, but figures like this, such as the Clayface action figures, you know, from Batman the Big Clay Guy, there's some Ben 10 action figures and Happy Meal toys that really fit this bill, too. I definitely wouldn't buy it retail, try to get it at a thrift store. The first thing I'm going to do is take a Dremel tool to the face with a drill attachment. I'm just going to take out these eyes, they're a little too cutesy, I'm going to add some depth to them. They don't have eye spots as such, they would have more, I think, holes in their face to sort of represent uh, where their facial features should be. In the art, they don't have much in the way of faces at all, but I'm going to indulge myself here and uh, get into this face a little bit. I'm going to take the drill, just get in there, not too much all at once. I don't want to get in caught in the plastic, heating up, and running, stripping the motor. This pot brownie smile is making it impossible to take this guy as any kind of threat. Well, it's just a little too cute and a little too sweet for a Dungeons & Dragons monster. So let's drill his mouth out like we're in Marathon Man engraving tool and then also a safety knife to cut out any remaining plastic that might be in that mouth. And the Dremel tool reveals that, much like myself, Marshmallow is empty inside, even though it feels quite solid. I was surprised to find out that it is in fact hollow. Now I'm going to take that engraving tool and I'm just going to scuff up the surface of this figure. It's simply too smooth for me to trust it and too glossy to hold anything. Glue, paint, I don't like it. And we're going to cover it with a lot of stuff anyway. So very quickly we can go over the entire surface with our tool and just scuff it up nice and good. Make it more receptive to glue and paint. That sort of thing. We're not going to see any of the surface anyway. So it's fine to just sort of abuse the heck out of it with our tools here. Just chew it up good and make sure we get that gloss off. And, and leave, leave the dangling hairs, that's fine. They're gonna act as roots for the stuff we're gonna to apply to it later. Now I'm gonna put some teeth into this mouth. What I'm using are these little plastic jewel beads. These are very cheap. And uh, they, their sort of angular nature and sort of sameness makes them look like stone. It actually works very nice once it's painted up. It is gonna look a little weird here at first. And in order to secure them in the mouth, I am using a little bit of E6000. I'm just using a little bit of a piece of wood here from Dollar Store Boat Model to flatten that glue out. And then we're going to put our plastic jewel bead teeth into this model. Just straighten them out with my little wooden tool. Now I'm going to slap some E6000 on the top. There's a bunch of different ways you can add texture to a figure like this, and I do them all in this video. So my first step is I'm going to cover it with E6000, just the top, smear it on nice and good with a popsicle stick here, with our craft stick, and then I'm gonna just dip it in my flocking sand. I've got craft sand from uh, the dollar store that was dirt cheap, and I'm just gonna dip it in. And you could do that to this entire figure. It wouldn't be that costly, it wouldn't be that hard to just cover most of it, all the parts you want with E6000 and then dip the whole thing into a flock, sanding flock, and that would work. I'm just going to do it a little bit here on the top. And there it is with the sand on the top, just sort of breaking the texture up. I didn't do it all over, so it isn't great. Now I'm going to drill a hole in the foot and I'm going to secure this to a can lid. This is a can lid that's on the larger side because this is a size colossal creature. I've already punched a hole in this can lid, which is uh, where the screw is going to go up into the foot. We'll just take a large uh, machine screw, I mean large enough to secure the, fit, the miniature onto the base. Drive that 
screw on up. This is a big, rather big mini, and I don't trust it to just use glue. Uh, whenever I'm using something that's plastic, I like to screw it down to the base if possible. And of course, something to scale. Now I'm gonna take a little hot glue and I'm gonna fill in the mouth here, make the transition a little smoother. Just also making some of the missing teeth areas with the hot glue. And then I'm going to take the hot glue and I'm going to run it all over like veins. You can certainly use this in lieu of sand if you've got hot glue, especially if you've got a larger size hot glue gun. This is one of the smaller scale ones. And I'm just running it over like veins or maybe something equivalent to bones, just some sort of structure that's within the earth elemental itself poking through, just trying to give it some points of interest and some texture, make it seem a little less cartoony, a little more realistic. And I'm just doing this on the back, on the front, and there's sort of an art to doing it just enough. If that's what you're using for texture, that's fine. It would certainly be effective, I think. Next, I'm going to spread a little PVA glue onto the can, which I know many of you are certain uh, will not hold the glue to the can. I promise you it will. Uh, this metal is waxed, so there is a substance on the can that's sort of not metal, it's not PVA to metal to sand, and with almost all of these uh, that I've done in the past, the, the glue is still on there. The glue and the sand stick just fine, so so far hasn't been a problem, been doing this for years. Then I'm going to take it outside, spray a little black primer inside the holes of the face, and hit the rest of it with a nice gray Rust-Oleum primer. Now, while I'm outside, I've got this Rolotex paint additive, which gives paint a texture. And I've got a bunch of this pretty cheap acrylic gray paint in a tube here. I'm just going to mix it in to the paint additive. Now, this stuff is supposed to be uh, caustic to your eyes and your skin, not breathe it in. I mix it up. It looks like cement. Now, you don't see me glopping it on, but let me tell you, there wasn't much to see. It only took a couple of seconds. I just glopped it on with the same brush I mixed it up with, just sort of a small size house painting brush, covered it, and it's amazing the, the amount of texture you get out of that stuff. It's really nice, and it adheres very well, and uh, ended up going over everything. You could still see some of the hot glue. I think a lot of the sand uh, texture was lost and sort of obscured, although you can see sort of a second texture in spots on top of him where the sand is. I go in, and I clean it up with a stick, then I put him into a hot uh, a dry box, which is just sort of a plastic bucket. A hair dryer, turned on high, not pointed directly at him. But I also, one of the places I con concentrated that texture was around the upper thighs. They're way too cartoony and thin. I built them out uh, to make it look a lot better, I think. And now wherever it's sort of smooth, the least amount of texture, I'm adding brown paint to sort of represent dirt. And we're going to let the stony parts, the bumpy parts, be stone. So with those, I'm just going to dry brush a uh, lemonade color, which is sort of a yellowish, white, um, very light, pale yellow. I didn't want to do white because I wanted to keep it away from looking like a snowman as much as possible. But the yellow is quite effective. A little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of brown paint already looks really good. Very much enjoying it. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of a, sort of a green flock to the, to the top of this creature uh, to represent sort of moss or grass, uh, something I've seen on the Earth Titan miniature, which was available uh, commercially. He had a, sort of mossy and grassy parts, and I like that effect. So we're just going to throw a little PVA glue on top of him, wherever we want that moss to be. And I think it looks best actually completely on top of um, just covering the top of this miniature really looks nice, very effective. Just sprinkling it onto the glued spots. Uh, yeah. a, a viewer of the show was very was nice enough to donate this flock to me, which is great. I try to use it as much as possible, and I just uh, stick a few scenic plants here and there onto it, and I think the overall effect is quite great, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Hit the little bell for future video notices. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider donating to my GoFundMe. 
Come check us out on Facebook where you can see photographs of this project and all the projects of the past. We've got a nice photo gallery of a bunch of miniatures there. Please come check it out. Say hey. We've also got a Discord. The links for all of those are in the description below. This is your Fungin Master wishing you good luck and good health.